Hello everyone, I'm recording this video to help you to learn the position of the muscles we have in our forearm. So remember, this is our anatomical position, right? The palms of our hands are facing anteriorly. And if you're in this position, we say that your position, you're supinating, right? So this is supination. And if you, because you can hold a bowl of soup, you're supinating. And if you eat the bowl of soup and you lay down, you will say that you're in supine position. So if this is supination, if you flip your forearm, you are in pronation. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, we have eight muscles in the flexor side that are in our forearm, okay? And out of these eight muscles, we are learning six of them. You need to remember that we have eight because four of them are superficial, one intermediate, and three deep. And you remember that because you have four minus one equals three, total of eight. We'll focus on six. So if you put your thumb in your medial epicondyle, in the humerus medial epicondyle that you guys already learned, and you position your four fingers like this, and you say, pass, fail, pass, fail, you have the position of the four superficial muscles we have in the flexor side of our forearm. The first one is the pronator teres. So P for pronator teres. Teres is a small round muscle. Pronator because it aids with the pronation of your forearm. So this one will be the pronator teres. Then we have the F. So pass fail, we have the F. Now you remember that laterally right here we have the radius bone, right? Here we have the radius and here we have the Ulna. So this F is the flexor because it's the flexor side, carpi because this muscle goes towards your metacarpus, radialis because this is the radius side. So you have pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis. Then you have the P for palmaris longus. Palmaris longus it is the one that if you press your thumb and your pinky together and you flex, it pops up. And this, the palmaris, palmaris longus pops up because it inserts on the flexor ret retinaculum of the hand right here. So since it doesn't go through the carpal tunnel, if you do this movement, it pops up. 30% of us don't have the palmaris longus anymore because of evolution. Clearly, I'm not in those 30%, right? You can see my palmaris longus right here. So we have pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and then you have the flexor carpi because it goes to your carpal bone, specifically the PC form. So flexor carpi ulnaris because this is the ulna side. Now, if you remove these four superficial muscles, you are in the intermediate layer. And then you have the flexor digitorum because it goes to your four digits, superficialis. So flexor digitorum superficialis is in the intermediate layer. Now, for you to find the deep ones, you need to remove this, and then you can see the only deep we're learning, which is the flexor pollicis, because it goes to our pollex longus, because it goes to the distal phalanx. So flexor pollicis longus. Now, this chunk of muscle you have here, lateral, is the brachioradialis. It goes from the humerus and inserts on the radius bone. So here you have the brachioradialis, okay, laterally. And when we look in the model we are studying, we can see here, so here we have the brachioradialis, always laterally, the chunk of muscle that I just grabbed before. And then you put the thumb or you look at the picture and you reference your thumb in the medial epicondyle of the humerus and you go pass fail pass fail and you have the position of the four superficial muscles so this one is the pronator teres then you have the flexor carpi radialis then you have the palmaris longus and if you follow the palmaris longus down you see here that it inserts on the flexor retinaculum right? So you see it starts on the flexor retinaculum. It doesn't go through the carpal tunnel. And the last one that you have here is the flexor carpi ulnaris. 
Now, you think that you're removing this pore superficial, you can find the intermediate layer, and here you have the intermediate layer. As you can see, it's a little deeper than the superficial, right? So this is the flexor digitorum superficialis. It goes to your four digits right here. Now, to find the only deep one we are learning, we remove this part, and here you have the flexor pollicis longus. So, is the flexor side, goes to your pollux, pollicis longus, because it goes to the distal phalanx of your pollux. Now, when we look at the extensors, we need to look at this side. Now, the easy way to learn the extensors is if you grab a marker and you label yourself. So, you go like one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? So, one is the deep muscles. We'll look them at the end because we'll need to remove all the others to be able to see them clearly. So, you go one, two, you point two fingers. Then you have extensor carpi radialis longus. Then you have the extensor carpi radialis brevis. One, two, three, four, you point four fingers. Then you have the extensor digitorum. One, two, three, four, five, you are in the little, in the pinky, right? So this will be the extensor digiti minimi. And number six is the ulna side, so you have the extensor carpi ulnaris, okay? Now, if you remove all this, you go to number one. And you go like this, you see, this is named anatomical snuff box, okay? Uh, because old days, people used to put tobacco here and sniff at it, right? Nowadays, people would put something else. <laughs> so, you can remember the anatomical snuff box, which are the three deep muscles we are learning, as a brevis sandwich. Brevis sandwich. So, you have here, the first one will be the abductor pollicis longus. Abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis and extensor pollicis longus. So it's a brevis sandwich. Abductor, because this will do the movement of abducting your thumb going away, okay? So if you go like this, this is flexion and extension. If you make a C, this is abduction. So in order for your thumb to go in this direction to make a C, the muscle needs to be this bottom one. This is the abductor pollicis longus, consequently, this will be the extensor pollicis brevis, and this will be the extensor pollicis longus. Remember, the brevis is in the middle because it's a brevis sandwich. Now, when we look at our model, here you have it. So, remember, the deep ones, you would put a dot right here, would be, we'll look at it later because we need to remove all the superficial, right? So, you have the first one, you go one, two, you point two fingers, then you have here, the extensor carpi radialis longus. Then you have the extensor carpi radialis brevis. So, extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis. Then you have one, two, three, four, you point four fingers. So, it goes to your four digits. Consequently, the next one will be this one, that's the extensor digitorum. Now, you cannot confuse the extensor digitorum with the extensor digitorum longus. The extensor digitorum longus is found in your leg. The extensor digitorum is found in your forearm. So one way you can remember that the extensor digitorum longus is in the leg is that longus starts with the letter L and leg starts with the letter L. So in your forearm, you just have the extensor digitorum, okay? So this is the extensor digitorum. Then if you go to our Counting, one, two, three, four, now we have five, and number five is in the pinky. So the next one after the extensor digitorum would be this one, that's this, the extensor digiti minimi. The last one is this one, that this is the ulna side, and this will be the extensor carpi ulnaris, right? Now, if we remove this, we see the deep ones, right? We need to remove to be able to see the deep ones. And here you would find the anatomical snuff box, and here you have the abductor pollicis longus, extensor, so it goes here, abductor pollicis longus, 
extensor polices brevis, and the last one right here, the extensor polices longus. Remember, it's a brevis sandwich, so you have the brevis in the middle. Abductor polices longus, extensor polices brevis, and extensor polices longus. I hope this helped, and I see you in lab. Thank you, bye! So now that you know how to identify all the muscles we are learning in the flexor side and also in the extensor side, I would like to point out that, as I mentioned before, this is the brachial radialis, right? And this is the muscle that you grab right here. So if you look in the model, the brachial radialis is this, and the first one we have here in the flexor side will be the pronator teres. Now when you look at the extensor side, this is the brachial radialis, so we look here, this would be the brachial radialis, right? And then the first one, brachial radialis, the first one right here would be the extensor carpi radialis longus. And then you have the extensor carpi radialis brevis and all the others that follow up.